Good morning friends. I hope everyone is doing well. I request everyone to watch my videos in a sequence for better understanding. If you really like my videos, please press the like button, share the videos with your friends, subscribe to my channel and also press the bell button to get the regular updates. In this video, I want to discuss about what is an access control mechanism, what are the various categories of access control mechanisms and in the subcategories what are they I will discuss. Then I will discuss about what is a pure aloha and the slaughter aloha access control mechanisms. Okay, now if you see that the access control will be done by the data link layer. So we have discussed the functionalities of the OSI layers in my earlier video. If you have watched that video, you can clearly say that data link layer will do the access control. Now the access control is depend on which link you are using. Okay. Suppose if the nodes are connected to a broadcast medium, then you need an access control mechanism. If the link is the broadcast communication, broadcast medium it is there and the, all the nodes share this common medium, then we need a access control mechanism. If it is a point to point link, means the source is there and the destination is there between these two, you have a point to point communication, then we no need to have a access control mechanism because it is a dedicated point to point link is there between the two nodes whereas this one is a shared medium is there so here we will call it as a broadcast medium and this is a point to point communication so in point to point communication we don't need access control mechanism however we need a access control mechanism in the broadcast medium now you can ask me why we need it suppose let's take that as it is a shared medium this node A, let's take it B, C, D is there. Now node A, when it is transferring the data, if node C also transferring the data to B, then what will happen? There will be a collision. Is it clear? Node A want to transfer the data to D. Node A want to transfer the data to D. So it will start transferring the data. At the same time, if C wants to transfer the data to B, then at this position there will be a collision. So if the data collision will happen, the data will not be able to receive to the destination. If it receives also, you will receive the garbage values. Are you able to understand it or not? So if there is a collision, you will lose the packets. Okay, the network performance will be degraded. So that's why we need the access control mechanisms when we are using the shared medium. Okay, now let me discuss what are the various categories of shared medium is there okay so this access control mechanisms even we can call it as a medium access control mechanisms okay are classified into basically three types one is randomized or random access control mechanisms random access control mechanisms and second one is controlled access mechanisms and next one is channelization access controlled mechanisms channelization access control mechanisms so totally the medium access control mechanisms are broadly classified into random access control mechanisms, controlled access mechanisms and channelization access mechanisms. Now, this random access control mechanisms are again classified into ALOHA, then CSMA, we have CSMA by CD, we have CSMA by CA, okay. Now, Aloha is again classified into two types. One is that pure Aloha and another one is the slotted Aloha. What is the CSMA? Carrier sends multiple access and the next one is carrier sends multiple access collision detection. 
carrier sends multiple access collision avoidance. So these are the control access mechanisms are there in the random access control mechanisms. Now coming to the controlled access mechanisms, we have polling mechanism, we have reservation strategy or reservation access mechanism and token passing mechanism. These are the three access mechanisms will come in the category called controlled access mechanisms. One is the polling mechanism, reservation mechanism and token passing mechanism. Coming to the channelization access mechanisms, we have TDMA, FDMA and CDMA. Okay, time division multiple access, frequency division multiple access, code division multiple access. So I hope you have understood that medium access control mechanisms are classified into three types and in each category we have several access mechanisms. So let me discuss about the aloha which is a, again classified into pure aloha and slotted aloha. Okay. So first let me discuss about the pure aloha or even I can call it as a aloha. Now remember this first point, it was initially designed for wireless LAN, okay, nothing but the Wi-Fi which is IEEE 802.11. So it was initially designed for wireless LAN. Now what is this pure aloha will do, whenever the node have a packet, it does not sense any channel or anything, it will not worry about anything, it will just transfer the data. Are you able to understand whenever there is a node have a packet or a frame or a data, it just transfer the packet, okay. Now what will happen if you in a broadcast medium, if you have a packet without sensing carrier or anything, if you just transfer that packet to the destination, then what will happen? There will be a collision. So just there will be a more collisions will be there in the pure haloha. Now one more thing, there is an acknowledgement system, meaning is that once the station sends the packet, okay, once the station sends the packet, it will wait for some timeout timer, okay, the same way as the flow control mechanism. So sender sends the packet, it will wait for the timeout. Now, once the receiver receives the packet, it has to send the acknowledgement within the timeout. If the acknowledgement receives within the timeout, then the sender will understand that the receiver has received the packet correctly. So the, there is proper communication is happening. Let's take that the acknowledgement does not receive within the timeout timer as because the acknowledgement is dropped or the packet is collided. Then what will happen? The sender again waits for a random amount of time and transfer the packet. Are you able to understand it or not? Let me discuss the points clearly. It was initially designed for wireless LAN, even we can call it as a Wi-Fi, which comes in the category of IEEE 802.11. So IEEE 802.11 is the standard for wireless LAN. It was initially designed for it. So in during the pure aloha, what it is doing? Whenever there is a source have a packet, it does not worry about other things and it will send and it will wait for an acknowledgement within the timeout. If the acknowledgement receives by the sender within the timeout, then it will understand that the packet is transferred successfully. If the packet is collided or the acknowledgement is lost, then sender will wait for a random amount of time. After timeout timer, if it does not receive the acknowledgement, then what it will understand that? Either the data is collided or the acknowledgement is lost, whatever it is, it will understand that the receiver has not received the packet properly and again it waits for a random amount of time and then it will send the packet, okay, are you able to understand? So the efficiency of the pure aloha is 18.4%, so if you send, you are utilizing the 18.4% out of total time. Okay, what is efficiency? Useful time by 
total time. So you are utilizing 18.4 percentage of the total time. So this is about the pure aloha. Now let me discuss about the next random access mechanism which is a slotted aloha. Okay, only difference in the pure aloha and slotted aloha is that in pure aloha, let's take that there is a timeline is there and it was divided into slots. Now, during the pure aloha, the sender can send during any time, meaning is that whether it is in the starting of the slot, whether it is in the middle of the slot, whether it is about to end the slot, whatever it is, the sender can send the packet. So, there will be a collision sermo. So, then they have modified and they send that during the starting of the slot only, the, if the node have a packet, it has to send. Okay. So, if there is a packet, sender want to send packet during this time, it is not allowed. It has to wait for the slot to be starting, then only it can send the frame. So, they have just modified the pure aloha such a way that the sender is allowed to send the frames during the starting of the slot. Okay, so that change we will call it as a slotted aloha and the remaining concepts are same. However, the efficiency of the slotted aloha is increased twice and it became as 36.8%. Remaining things are same with the pure aloha and slotted aloha only difference is that the sender is allowed to send the frames at the starting of the slot. Okay, I hope you have understood how the medium access control mechanisms are classified into three categories and in each category what kind of medium access control mechanisms are there. Then we have discussed the pure aloha and the slotted aloha. I hope you have understood these two concepts. If you still have any doubts related to this video, feel free to ask me in the comment section. I will try to clear your doubts in less than 24 hours. If you really like my video, please press the like button, share the videos with your friends, subscribe to my channel and also press the bell button. Thank you for watching my video. Have a nice day.